the secret of life. The great ones have written about it. The new prophets profit from it. The Bible says it most elegantly. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. The key is positioning your thinking to attract the world and its gifts to you. The mind is a magnet attracting what you desire. May I speak to Bernadine Billington, please? Yes, Mrs. Billington? Good morning. This is John Gray from Union Standard. First, my condolences at the passing of Travis. He was an outstanding employee. His work with our machinery was impeccable and he held himself to the highest standards. I work with human resources and somehow we've re misplaced his social security number, which will be necessary in order to process his profit sharing investment with Union Standard. You have a right to a check and I want to get that right to you. Well, we already received that check a few weeks after he passed. I don't understand. Really? Uh, Mrs. Billington, you're right. I see that we've processed that check. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong paper. What I see here is we are processing a check for $10,000 as a gift to you to commemorate Travis's 35 years of outstanding service. Yes, he would have liked that. His social security number is 555. We'll send that check right out to you. I want you to come back in one hour. Yes, sir. To be picking up a young black male. He'll be going to LAX. What will he be wearing, Mr. Gray? Don't worry. You'll know him when you see him. Mr. Reels, so how goes the concert? It's going very well. We took in about 300,000 at the front gate, and uh, I think we're going to double. We took in some concessions from the last night. Uh, I don't want to cause any problem, Mr. Gray, but uh, try to start being real impatient about that $50,000 balance, and you know it was due before the concert started. I know. But don't worry about it. Look at their money. I'll tell you what. I have two checks. Deposit their check in the Coliseum safe. The other, that's a present for you. Just can't open it until after Mr. Ferrelli gets his money. All right? Well, thank you, Mr. Gray. Now, it's been a long flight. Is there a nearby laboratory? Show Mr. Gray to the bathroom by my office upstairs. Great. Place the money in here. I'll be back in five minutes. For a hand, I lost my eye in the fight. Now I'm looking at sand. I'm a pirate. Got the cannon on the back. It's like yo-ho-ho. Men's room's right over there, sir. Very impressive collection, Mr. Reels. Well, well, thank you, Mr. Gray. Very impressive indeed. Mr. Reels, did you know that the Spanish word for doblon is double? Well, no, I didn't, Mr. Gray. My uh, father-in-law, he owns this pit here arena, and uh, he loves antiques, as I'm sure you do as well. No, Mr. Reels. I love the money. <laughs> Well, I got your money right here, $320,000. Let's take a look. Mr. Real, Mr. Gray, the gentlemen from TriStar are here, and they refuse to wait any longer. Hello, Mr. Ferrelli. Uh, have a seat. This is uh, John Gray from uh, Gray Entertainment. Mr. Ferrelli. Nice meeting you, too. Let's get down to business. You made good on your advancement to secure our talent for $50,000. The other $50,000 for the talent was due before the show started. I understand your plane was late. Life happens. So I've granted permission for this concert to commence. And I thank you for that. You can thank me, Mr. Gray, by giving me my $50,000 right now. 
Is that my money inside that suitcase, Mr. Gregg? No, Mr. Ferrelli. According to our contract, I issued a cashier's check. That is in the Coliseum safe. $50,000, just as we agreed. Excuse me. Gail? What's up, girl? Now I'm here. It's okay. Make sure Goldberg's there. All right. I have the documents right here. Let me call you back on that. Gentlemen, I've got to make this call in private. Okay? Take a piss while you're at it. Because after all, you're paying $100,000 for talent. Of ours, it's only worth 75. It's already pissed on you. Boys, I want you to escort him outside so we can take care of this business. If you get any issues from him, take care of it. Mr. Ferrelli, you're a real sharp man. I like that. I got another business deal to talk to you about. I'll be back in a minute. Gail, that sounds perfect. I'll call you tomorrow night. Just make sure all the financials are in order. Guys, I gotta use the bathroom. Hey, it's okay. There's only one way in and out. All right, so now reels. Now that we understand each other a little bit better, I've had enough. Open the safe or I'm gonna open your skull. said to grab him. Yo, big man, watch where you going. Little man, you look where you're going. What you gonna do about it? Get out of my face. I don't have no time for this. <laughs> where the hell is he? Where the hell is this guy? Hey, driver, what's up? Is that you, Diamond? You know it's me. What's good, baby? Everything went well tonight? It was epic. Yo, man, you got to check out one of these joints, baby. We out. LAX. Here we go. I'm a world-class champion. My arrogance, talent level, the game intimidates me. But I refuse to change who I am. For I must compete against the greatest challenge of all times, the unfairness of life. He beat me in my first race 21 years ago. The race I speak of is to acquire happiness. Happiness is money. Money can change any situation. Yo, listen. Listen close, and you will learn. I am unbeatable, unstoppable. My name is Diamond. I live in one of the hottest buildings in Hartford that overlooks the insurance capital of the world. Huh. Who needs insurance? All I need is money. If you take the elevator to the 32nd floor, you will arrive at my crib. I like to think of myself as a collector of antiquities. The game has been good to me, so much that I own this building. Over the past four years, to make it to my satisfaction, I've dropped several million into it. Another day, another dollar. See, I know my money, and I made a lot of dead presidents. And as time goes on, I'm gonna make more. See, I understand the art of achieving. It's simple. If you want something bad enough, go after it obsessively. Now you need to send me some money for that advice. Knee bowed and body bent before thy throne of grace. Turpentine his imagination. Put perpetual motion in his arms. Fill him full I remember doing that when I was eight. I entered the contest, filled out the application Ascent, myself. Tongue on fire. And now, oh Lord, when I stare down at the steep and slippery steps of death, when this old world begins to rot beneath my feet, lower me to my dusty grave, and peace for the great getting up morning. Amen. Hello, everyone.
everyone. Tonight, I'm here to announce the winner of the oratorical competition. And in his rendition of James Weldon Johnson's God's Trombone, we have eight-year-old Diamond Ruff. Will Diamond and his parents please come to the stage to accept his $500 check and his trophy? Thank you. Thank you, judges. I cannot accept this. Do you have any cash? <laughs> Young man, where are your parents? They couldn't make it today. They got shot. 21 years ago, he thought he jacked me when he robbed me of everything. But I had the will to survive. And once I learned the secret of confidence, I knew how to win. Last night, just another gig. I love to run these games to keep the paper flowing. I'm about to pull my greatest heist in his own backyard. Now, if I could pull this off in Hartford, who has the best police force in the country, then you know I'm about my business. All right, so does everybody know what they have to do tomorrow? What's up? Somebody died in here? What's wrong? To be honest with you, man, I don't know, it's something different, you know, something I'm not used to, and, uh, you know, honestly, it makes me kind of nervous. Look, all you have to do is get to the bank before the heist. Flirt with the tellers, watch for the cops. So in reality, you're not even part of the job. Yeah, you're right. I mean, clearly, we're not talking about ladies here, you know? It's not something I'm used to. Suave's my dude. See, I always liked him from the start. He was always there when I needed him, and he's smooth as ice with the ladies. This cat got swag. Look at the usual. Yo, man, a lot of talent up in here tonight. I better can pull at least two of these shorties tonight, man. Two in two hours. Two ladies in two hours. Look, man, you can't have sex with a phone number. You got to do better than that. We're not talking about a phone number, man. I'm talking about producing your panties, baby. It's bragas. <laughs> Let's see what you can do. No more. In fact, okay? <laughs> okay, get a usual for him, too. Like a style. Got confidence. I said I'll do two panties in two hours. I'll raise you two more, puppy. Oh. Let me get a little shot, baby. I like your style. Follow me. What's your name? Roberto. Suave. I like that, man. Man, I live for this type of junk, Diamond. Man, when we see the artillery, man? Tomorrow. But KK, remember, the guns are just for an emergency. KK is the toughest chick I ever seen. She grew up on the streets like me, but she handles guns like I handle cash. Lawless. Everybody, now on the floor! Now! I want you, Mr. Cash, here to put the money in the bank. You crazy, man? I won't put a cat in you with the quickness. Yo, this is yours right now if you work for me. What? I just know business, and I can use somebody like you. Here. You really about your paper? Give me a call tomorrow. Man, get out of here, man. Eddie M. Sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. You think it's a game? Diamond's right, guys. We stick to the plan. Everything's gonna work out just fine. Remember, I've been working at the bank for six months now. I know the routine. I bet you do. You were screwing the bank manager for five months. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know that. It's a lot you don't know about your girl, man. She's screwing the security guard, too. Now, Mary is my secret weapon. She may fuck like a rabbit, but she got style. And she knows how to manipulate men. How it cracks me up and how seconds she can have the richest men licking her hands like a dog in heat. Yo, this chick can single-handedly bring down empires. Bartender, glass of opus for the beautiful lady. I'll take her sparkling water, thank you. Hello, my handsome, well-dressed black man. What can I do for you? I just want to talk business. So you're a freak. You want to talk about stocks and bonds or mutual funds or how much money you made today? That sounds good. I've never done that before. How would you like to make money beyond your wildest dreams? Drive the fastest cars, eat the best food, live in the best cribs? I'm with that. If you're for real. It's toast. Success. 
All right, back to business. I'm gonna be bringing in some old school dudes I used to run with. For some extra muscle. I'm with you, brother. I felt some kind of way about it, though. You're breaking your own rules. You were the one who told us not to do no game in Hartford. You also know bank robberies and guns aren't your thing. Gail is my operations director and my second in command. She's tough and she's always on top of her game. She's like Russell Simmons and has a gift for putting systems in place. It should be there, believe me. It's there. Uh, I'll call you back. Excuse me. Excused? Trying to start a business? Aren't you perceptive? What kind of business is that? Business management. You know, you ask a lot of questions. Hmm. What do you do? I'm an artist. You're unemployed, huh? <laughs> I artistically create opportunities to manipulate the system. And you're a con artist. Nice. If I was a con artist, hmm. would you help me manage my business? How do I know you'd pay me? You could be conning me too. Let me tell you what I do. Okay. I schedule and organize huge businesses. I help them to make a lot of financial flow. So could we have lunch tomorrow? You're dangerous. I have to watch you. <laughs> so, Gail, you out? No. That's not what I'm saying. I just think it's foolish for you to risk everything you built because you need some theatrical high. You love theater that much? Produce a Broadway show. You've got the money. You wiring out on this one, Diamond. And you're crazy for risking it all unless you really don't care about yourself or us. I didn't say I cared about any of y'all. This is my business. And if I wasn't putting money and food on your table for the past year, none of y'all would be here. Now, I just need you for this one last job. Then you can walk. And I'm gonna give you a raise from what I said. Everybody. Just have my money ready when it's over. I got your back, my brother. Even if you were tied up every one of you. Man, forget all that. Diamond, where the guns at, man? I'm with you, baby. My corporate pimp. Hey, Diamond. What about me? Then there's Robert. This cat is bugged out from the moment I met him. He likes some common sense, but he's got a good look and he's white. Looks like a Wall Street CEO. He can get away with a lot of stuff because of the way he looks. I met him at a local print shop, trying to get off making counterfeit bills. Sir, sir, what is this? Oh, I, I, I gave you the wrong bill. I no, made, I sir, just... I'm gonna have to take this to my bank. No, can I have me have that back? we have a problem here? No, we don't have a problem. I just, she won't give me the bill back. Uh, may I have that? I money? can't give you this back. You were making fake money in my store. No, oh. not fake money. I was just copying that. That's yeah, why yeah, I it's got a it shine to it. You ran, in, you ran out of toner on the backside. This okay, is can I have that back, please? You're trying to pass this off as real? It's got a white border where no, you I cut it. No, I wasn't trying to pass that as This is real? illegal, that sir, That was like okay? a joke I'm I was have to playing. Call the cop. Hey, hey, hey. Great work you've done today. Look, I'm with Prentice National Fraud Protection and everything today was a test. Mr. Williams here is a paid actor. Look, great work you're doing to get these counterfeit bills off the streets. It's a big problem. Between me and you, I'll get you right up in the next corporate newsletter. Thank you. All right, Princey's. Hey, buddy. I'll talk to you for a minute. My name's Diamond. Robert Goldberg. Hey, which way you headed? West side. I'll give you a ride. That's your car? What are you, a drug dealer? Come work with me. Look, I got two grand in my pocket right now. And this money don't glow in the dark. What do you want me for? I like your look. My look? Yeah, you blend in. Hey, you like rap music? Why not? Let's take a ride. Robert, I'm not going to be able to use you tomorrow. What is this, a white thing? Now, you know color has nothing to do with this. Mary's white. The only color I love is green. So you called me here just to waste my time. I mean, we could have done this on the phone, couldn't we? I want to talk to you privately after the meeting. 
why don't you tell people right now what's going on? I mean, I have nothing to hide. Just tell it in front of my colleagues. Okay. You want to put it on the table? Let's talk about your lack of common sense. Common sense? I have a lack of common sense. Your ex-wife lawyer came here today asking questions. If I was your employer, that's what I'm talking about. She's been asking a lot of questions, okay? She wanted to know about my Jaguar and my new house. I mean, I gave her most of my money from last year. And now she's starting to ask about where I work. I mean, this woman is vicious. So I figured if I sent her to you, you'd come up with some story to cover it. But this is your problem. That's not my ex-wife. That's not even my type of chick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can't use you, man. You know, I got you a lot of money. But Shane is the strongest, his weakest link. And you are the weak link. I think you need to separate from the team. <laughs> separate. This is, this is really stupid. I, I know what separation means. First, you separate a little bit at a time, and then all of a sudden, you separate completely. No. No. I've had enough of this. Woods. Why, boy, you heard what Dom said. You okay. All right. All right. I'm out of here. Some serious issues, man. Yo. I need to start doing psychological background checks on people. But yo, tomorrow is the big day. I need everybody on point, all right? All right, this meeting is over. I couldn't have scripted it better. KK, Rock, and myself would be seated inside a 30-foot Trojan horse, which is being transported to the bank under the banner of Northeast Promotions. Yo, Diamond, this is a sweet setup, son. Yo, take a picture of me, man. So I can put it on the web. I <laughs> show it to all my homies in the hood. All right, Diamond, we're ready to roll. You all set in there? Yeah, they're pulling us in right now. All right, got my monitors up. Mary's with the bank manager. We've got Charlie all set in the bank. <laughs> and Suave is flirting with the customers. Everything is on schedule. Now, this building was originally a tavern, and the locals would meet here, and they decided to build the state's first bank. And if you look up here, the bank was founded in 1792. Now, does anyone have any questions? What's that? Well, every now and then, we get these promotions. Does anyone know the legend of the giant Trojan horse of ancient Greece? All right, Diamond, you got 11 minutes to get the job done. Good luck. All right, it's time to make this happen. Let's make history. Nobody panic! This is a robbery! Cooperate, and we will be out of here shortly. I encourage you all to enjoy the show. But remember, the guns are real! Ladies and gentlemen, if we are visited by any customers, act normal. This is improv theater. If you stayed awake in history class, you might remember the story in Greek mythology. The Trojans have taken over Harvard Savings and Loan. KK and Rock in the vault. Diamond, you got three minutes. Read your poem and move. The next piece I prepared. Is okay, Diamond, stop right there. Tell KK to come up from the vault. Are you crazy? What are you saying our names for? Get out of here! No, I'm taking over this operation. We don't have time for this. Diamond, what's going on in there? Come on, come on, shoot him! We're out, we're out! Yeah, what happened? The police were not supposed to be there! I don't 
know, I don't know, I don't know. my bonus diamond? Yeah, 15 years. Your diamond, I'm down with KK. I ain't going out like no sucker, man. I'm about to go hang. Chill, y'all gonna get murdered, man. Look here, look, man. Everything is gonna be all right, all right? Trust me. What's inside this gym bag, man? stuff, man. I went to the gym before I came here, if that's all right with you. Why are you asking me what's in the bag? Anyone else in that van? We need you to exit that van with your hands up. Man, you think we're going to walk out of here alive after this? Of course not. The police are looking for gladiators, right? We're going to be the hostages. So crazy it might work. And we need to look injured. Here, come in, man. I'm hurt! I need a doctor. I need a doctor. Turn your back to me now. Back up very slowly to the sound of my voice. Turn around. I need... So I realize you're hurt. I only got one ambulance here. I'm gonna try to get you some help. I still think this little shit's calling our bluff. I can't take the risk that he is. Is everything all set at the airport? We got two units waiting to take him out at 401 at the Quamic. Okay, occupants. We've secured our end of the deal. Do not hurt any of the hostages. You're gonna get an escort to the airport, but you first have to let the hostages go. Come on, you little shit. Take the bait. Get going! No! No! You! You want to do is this a king, man? He ain't got no fucking gun! That's a kid! That's a no! fucking kid! No! No! On the ground, now! Boy, go to your room. You know white man come here with presents? <coughs> but you promised me. Just shut up and go to your room. in the car, boys. I got some business to take care of. 
I would have paid you the money. Please, please. Let's go see. Salvation. It says tongue on fire. And I, oh Lord, when I start down the steep and slippery steps of death, lower me to my dusty grave in peace for the great getting up morning. Amen. Young man, I love what you're talking about. I don't know where you learned that from, but it makes a lot of sense. Come on, man. Come on, we're going to talk about this. My oh, man, get your money, man. You want to get your money, man? Now, you want this money, man. I'm gonna teach you some things. You know? So we gonna hang out and we gonna have a good time. No man, where's your mom and your dad? Dad, drugs killed them both. So you're basically using yourself then. Not basically, I am. Sometimes I feel like giving up. My name's Diamond. Well, Mr. Diamond. You know what, I know how you feel, because sometimes I feel like giving up, too. But then I think about the five words that my mother taught me. What five words? And this, too, shall pass. So, what did I do wrong? It's your image. Do you know what I mean? If you want to make it in the game, you got to play the game. You got to convince people that your product is a must. I'm going to teach you a few valuable things. That's worth more than just a couple of dollars. Lesson one, you got to look the part. Lesson two, be cultured. Lesson three, it's the hustle. Later, I discovered that the art of hustle was the trick of the trade. The secret of life was confidence and attitude. I knew how to make money, and businessmen respected me. They even paid for my opinions on stocks, bonds, trade, etc. They treat me to fancy dinners like I was the king of the city. They needed my advice. See, it's all about strategy. If you want to beat life, you have to believe in yourself. I wasn't even 18, and I beat them. I was a self-made millionaire. I was a winner until... This guy's been saying that ever since I got here. I still can't believe my plan failed. I learned one lesson. In business, if you have a weak link in your organization, get rid of it immediately, or it will get rid of you. Step out to the center line. Face the right. Now I'm at Hollis Prison. Been sentenced for 10 years with parole in five. Charlie, our driver, escaped from the Move hospital. Forward. Thank God I got caught for bank robbery and not drug possession. It's considered late for the crime I did. Little do they know, during the trial, I was running game. I ran down a whole rap of my parents being killed when I was seven, raising myself on the streets. I got sympathy. I read the kid's name was Kendall Sharif. He was a high school All-American athlete with the full academic scholarship to Yale University. Now that's all gone. I was wrong for creating the environment for the kid's death. I think the judge thought there would be a race riot, so they gave me a lighter sentence. They didn't even bring up the kidnapping charges. This is the drama class, my only creative outlet in here. That's Ralph, the instructor. He's all right. Uh, guys, can I get everyone's attention? I'd like to say that the play we just did was magnificent. What do you think? I don't want to say all that. No disrespect to your play or director, but people were laughing at us. And it wasn't a comedy. Well, <laughs> Does anyone have any suggestions on how we can increase the success or believability of our work? The script is OK, but the characters, they weren't believable. I mean, these guys are supposed to be hardcore drug dealers. But in a dialogue, you have them saying, gee, there's the police. <laughs> Yo, that's not real. You want to reach the prisoners? You got to get us to relate to the characters. We studied this at the university. Uh, I forget what the exact technique is called. The technique is called keeping it real. <laughs> yeah. Good points. Good points. Uh, Diamond, perhaps you'd be interested in helping to rewrite the production. Or better yet, maybe direct it. 
You want me to direct the play? Oh, oh, oh. Give it a shot. Oh, oh. See what happens. Right. I'll take you up on that challenge. All right. So now was my time to show the boys what I was all about. And I impressed them all. They drank some more and started smoking illegal substances. And despite the popular rumors, <laughs> marijuana does not give you an enhanced sense of the road. Crap! One night, while we were rehearsing, the guys were watching Reverend Shrek on TV. I found out he was coming to visit Hollis next week. Little did I know, he will become our business partner. We have not seen a man like this since the great, late Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to the Reverend Trek Woods. Praise the Lord. Brothers, brothers, how you guys doing? I want to extend my gratitude to the administration of this organization for allowing me to be here today in this brief but yet important moment with you guys. We ain't got no choice. Look around. We locked up. <laughs> <laughs> now ain't this a mess. A brother can't come by and say hi without a trifling Negro acting up. Now, <laughs> uh, now, nah, 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 I'm just playing with you, brother. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You are not a trifling Negro. You're a real trifling Negro. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm just playing with you. Just having a little fun at your expense. I want to thank you guys for allowing me to be here this afternoon. I salute you guys for trying to better yourself through education and through spirituality. Yeah. Brother Trek, I've been watching you for quite some time, and um, all the brothers in here think you're the real thing. What motivates you? Because your game is smooth as silk. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Diamond. Brother Diamond. First, let me tell you something. I am not running a game. I truly believe that God has put me here to positively inspire others and show them who he is. What motivates me is when I see the injustice inflicted on the innocent. I get so much joy out of serving others. That satisfies my soul, Brother Diamond. So how do you justify making money in the name of God? Now, I'm not getting rich off spreading the word of God. I am not a con artist. Actually, I normally face financial hardships because of my lack of interest in money. Are there any other questions? What about that march on Washington? Is it still happening? Well, hopefully we can pull it off in three years, but that is based and contingent on my financial resources. All the influence you got on people, money shouldn't be a problem for you. Maybe I should hire you as my fundraising manager, <laughs> since you make it so simple, Brother Diamond. Yeah, maybe you should, because I know I can help you raising some money for your campaign. Is there any way I can get in contact with you? It's my car, Brother Diamond. Write me. Definitely. Maybe next week we'll go get lunch in Boston. <laughs> my treat. <laughs> I like you, Brother Don. A few days later, I got a present under my door. It was a letter from Reverend Shrek asking me for some help. I guess he saw the article that was written up in The Current about the plays that we were doing at the detention center and had a vision of us working together for the masses around the world. We have a visitor. Who is it? A woman. What's up, girl? These glasses. Thank you, Mr. Ruff. I didn't think you'd notice. Hmm. How are you, Diamond? I'm all right. Yo, what you know about this guy? Wow. I hear he's doing great things. You gonna join forces with him? Bad boy going good, huh? I like that. So I went to work on a business plan for Trek. I told him I was down, just no kids. I don't have the patience. To me, Trek swag was a winning edge. I told him that people were attracted to his sincerity, words, and image. People would love to take him home and be inspired. So I put the idea of marketing books and videos in his head. He could record his speeches and sell them to the entertainment company too. His net would be at least five mil a year. I put a monthly timetable for him to follow and would send one in a couple of weeks. The only thing I asked was that he would throw me into the budget as a consultant. 
This just into the newsroom. We're learning from police sources that critical evidence has just been uncovered in the Hartford murder case of suspect Diamond Ruff, accused of killing an 18-year-old this past summer following a botched bank robbery. You may recall the victim, Kendall Sharif, an All-American high school football player gunned down weeks before beginning his freshman year with a full Let's scholarship go. to Yale. Let's go. Your brother IP, man. Yo, why everybody flipping on me in here? Everyone received word that you were responsible for the young black genius death. I can't help you, man. Yo, what's yo, it me, man? You the one that shot little homie on the street, huh? You ain't do it, save it. You in my house now, homie, and you gonna pay. Yo, chill! Oh! Ah! Brother Diamond, I see you're awake. How you doing, brother? I feel like I got hit by a truck. So, Diamond, it's time. Time for what? I think it's time we make our business partnership official. I read your letters, and I have faith that you could help me make this march a reality. So I was compelled to come here and, and offer my help. Help me do what? Yeah, this is lies. I didn't shoot that kid. The cop with the tattoo shot him, man. Honestly, it sounded a little fishy to me as well. The police came out with all this information over a year after the incident. But, Don, we do have a problem. Your fingerprints are on a gun that killed Kendall Sharif. It can't be true. I know, but it doesn't look good. But for what it's worth, I believe you. So, Don, if you could think back, did you see any, any, any witnesses? Yeah. Half the Hartford Police Department was there. Well, of course, they're not going to admit to anything. So we brought in Dr. Leah, famous forensic expert. Also, we hired a private investigator. Good looking, man. Uh, no problem, brother. We just hoping we can get through this trial. Trial? Yeah. The state said once you wake up in your coma, an arraignment will be set. The state of Connecticut versus Diamond Ruff. You are accused of first-degree manslaughter. Oh, my God. So once you get better, they're going to transport you back to Hollis. But I made arrangements so that you can be put in protective custody. Thanks, man. So what do we do in the meantime? Pray. <laughs> Man, I had to call in the cavalry to get me out of this problem. So I made that call to Chicago to get my boy Everett Wilson. Now, this dude used to be a pimp, but now he's a lawyer. This cat is going to represent me, and he's the best in the game. <laughs> you may laugh at his clothes, but the boy is sharp, and his game is on point. Everett, glad to see you, man. You all right? I'm chilling, man. Sharp suit. Oh, this old thing, man. That's what I wear when I don't care how I look. Thank you, bro. Oh, man, the kind of money you be putting down, I'd be a fool not to come. My mama ain't raised no fools. Mm. So by now, I'm sure Gail gave you the rundown. Oh, yeah, Gail good. <laughs> good. And, oh, and yes, yeah, she did give me the information. In fact, she briefed me. But I also been checking out TV, reading the newspapers on this case. And, you know, you're getting a lot of national exposure. You are the man <laughs> next to me. I did not shoot that kid. Lieutenant Brown did it. I believe you, but we got to prove Lieutenant Brown pulled that trigger. Now, did you see any onlookers? Yeah, there were some people out there, but they looked like drunks or something. Oh, yeah, I know the neighborhood. A lot of crackheads. My cousin hang out over there. Mm. Hmm. Well, because of a lack of evidence, I hate to tell you this, 
we gonna have to put down some cold cash, man. We gotta spend some real money, move it around, get the word out, get some people found out if we get some witnesses or something, man, and speak on your behalf, man. But we can make this happen, don't you worry, man, because you got me. <laughs> you know, pimping ain't easy as the girls would do it too. So I'm going to come home and bring everything I got, baby. Okay. Well, you know, Gail got the checkbook. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. She got the checkbook. She got more than that. I like that, Gail. Yeah. She got, she's sitting on something. I don't know if you know that or not. She got a hell of a future behind her. <laughs> so, yeah, man, don't you worry, though. I got your back. All right, man. I feel much better now. Love. Court is now in session. Mr. Ruff, you didn't dismiss your current lawyer, too, did you? Here comes Hurley. Attorney Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Mr. Ruff is going to have to represent himself. Oh, Your Honor, I am so sorry. Police stopped me. They thought I was a pimp. And I have no idea why. <clears throat> Where you been, man? Don't worry about it. the performance I'm going to put on this afternoon. Whoo, you're going to want to give me a raise. Everett's from the street, so he's always got a plan. I wasn't too sure what was up with the grandma that he brought in, but as Truck would say, God was about to open the door. Oh, good morning, Miss Hurley. Good morning, baby. Well, well where you from, Miss Hurley? Well, I lives in Hartford over on Adams Street. Mm -hmm. uh, but my home is Savannah, Georgia. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you from the South, Miss Hurley? Oh, yeah, born and raised in Chatham County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Well, would it be correct for me to say, with you being brought up in the South and all, mm -hmm. that you're basically an honest person, Miss Hurley? Yes, I'm honest, but I ain't God. And I tell a little white lie every now and then. Excuse me? You know, like uh, when the Jehovah Witness come to your door, and they want to know <laughs> somebody home. Mm -hmm. Well, I sneaks over to the door and I tell him I ain't home. <laughs> 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 That's the only lie I know I done told. <laughs> well, well, now, why are you here today, Miss Hurley? Because I see that ad in the paper about that boy that got shot. I go on my way to do the laundry. The sirens come out of nowhere. It scared me to death. And there was a helicopter. And they was all after that big shoebox uh, with wheels on it. And they were speaking to him through a big old uh, uh, speaker home. The man using the megaphone, do you see him in the courtroom today, Miss Hurley? No. But his partner, that's his partner over there. That man right there in the, in the gray suit over here. Two people jumped out that van. They were shooting everywhere. Mm. And the police, they shot them chillings dead. And then two more men, they got out. They had to be hostages because they had blood everywhere. And one of them they took, and they put him in the ambulance. That other one was on the car. That's when that boy got out. He had his hands up, okay. and he came out. And I heard that other one that they had over there. He told him, don't shoot. But that man over there in that gray suit, he shot that boy. That's the man you saw pull the trigger? Oh, yeah. I done told you what I saw. I, I have no more questions for this witness. Thank you, Miss Hurley. You're welcome, son. Attorney Andrews, you may cross-examine this witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, baby. Mrs. Hurley, how old are you? Eighty at the end of this month. Would you say your mind is not as sharp as it used to be? Every day I lose a little bit more. I don't see as well, and I don't remember things like I used to. Seems like the older you get, the harder it, it is for, to get people to help you. Now, Ms. Hurley, do you remember the defense attorney who brought you in here today? You mean the young man that was just asking me questions? Can you point to him? Yeah, that's him over yonder, I think. Your Honor, I object to this line of questioning. The prosecutor is trying to confuse the witness. Your Honor, I'm just trying to reveal Ms. Hurley's memory and psych capacity to the jury, which is imperative to her witnessing the murder. Liar, liar. Objection overruled. You may continue. Could you please point out the man who was a hostage that day? Oh, yeah. I think it was him sitting right over yonder, right there. Sitting Thank you, Ms. Hurley. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. <laughs> I 
Lieutenant Brown, could you give your full name for the court record? Robert Lewis Brown. Robert Lewis Brown. I understand that you were a law enforcement agent for 30 years now? No. I've been a police officer for 22 years. 10 years with the South Highland Police Department and 12 years with the state police. Okay, my bad. 22 years. Um, would you say that you're an excellent law enforcement officer? You don't achieve the rank of lieutenant by being a poor officer. My point exactly. Um, 18 years ago, you got yourself in a little bit of trouble. Uh, you were accused of being involved in racist activity, is that correct? The incident in which I believe you're alluding to was taken out of my records. I was cleared of all false charges. You know, how did you get that information? Your Honor, whatever the defense is making reference to, I need time to look into it. There may be constitutional issues involved. I ask that you strike whatever Attorney Wilson said regarding the incident from the record, Your Honor. Your Honor, I came across a little article in a newspaper that, that tells the whole story, and it's not unconstitutional to speak on an article that's in a reputable publication. So as I was saying, 18 years ago, you were accused as being a member of the Ku Klux Klan. The investigation said they even have photos of you leading one of the meetings. And then the investigation was suddenly dropped because the pictures just poof, just disappeared. It is magically, magically delicious. They just gone, just like that. What happened? Yeah, they were lost, but uh, I had nothing to do with it. You know, I find it funny, the fact that you left out of your little soliloquy there, Counselor. I was doing independent, undercover work on the Klan, and that's why I was at the rally. Oh, yeah, right, independent, Ind independent. How come you have this tattoo? of the racist symbol of the bird, the ugly bird with the hat. I don't know what y'all call it. Peck of wood, Your Honor. I'd like to have this peck of wood put into evidence. Objection, Your Honor. Order in the court. Order in the court. Now, you've gotten away before with killing people. You're trying to do it again. Well, didn't you pull the trigger on Kendall Sharif? No, I did not. That low-life scumbag did. No, you shot the kid just like you shot my mother and my father. Yeah, Christmas Eve, 1986, you shot my mother and my father right in my house. Please, it's Christmas. Order in the court, order in this court. Well the truth will come to the light, and you will pay for all your wrongdoing. I have no more questions for this witness. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Mr. Ruff, can you say your whole name? Diamond Ruff. I don't have a middle name. And how did you acquire the name Diamond Ruff? Is it making uh, reference to the coined adage, diamond in the rough? Attorney Andrews, my mother gave me my name. She said when I was born, I was gifted. I was a special kid. When I was two, she said I was advanced for my age. But she didn't have enough money to put me in the good schools with the good kids. She was worried that when I grow up, I'll be a victim of the ghetto. But she always told me, boy, one day you're going to shine. She said I'd be a diamond in the rough. I see. So would you consider your intellect as average, above average, or highly above average? I have knowledge itself. So I would say extremely above average. Well, we have looked at all the good work you've done in prison. We've also noticed all the good press you've gotten for the prison. Mr. Ruff, I say without reservation, your work is brilliant. So you've been doing your homework. Yes. Your creativity was noticed as a child. Even now, your high intellect is recognized. Ralph Savina, the drama director, stated that yesterday. Mr. Ruff, someone with your high intellect would have known when Kendall Sharif came out of that van, he would recognize you. After all, he saw you remove your disguise, correct? I know what you're doing. It's pretty slick. But your game ain't working. 
Lieutenant Brown shot Kendall Sharif. Yo, why you fronting, man? May I approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. Mr. Ruff, is this weapon familiar? I saw it the day Kenneth Sharif was killed. Can you please say it louder so the jury can hear you? I saw it the day Kendall Sharif was killed. But your fingerprints are all over it. And the bullet that shot Kendall Sharif came from this gun. The coroner report confirms that. I don't care what the police did to tamper with the evidence. You know what? I think everybody's just full of shit. More language like that, Mr. Ruff, and you'll be in contempt of this court. Sorry, Your Honor. Mr. Ruff, why don't you plead guilty and make it easier on yourself? Objection, Your Honor. Attorney Andrews is tripping, and she's badgering the witness. He's already said he's innocent. Objection sustained. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Attorney Wilson, would you like to perform redirect examination on this witness? Absolutely. <sighs> Mr. Ruff, you say that you're certain that Lieutenant Brown pulled the trigger. Why is that? Because I saw him do it. Then why is he so certain that you're responsible? Because I'm an easy target. He's looking for somebody to blame. And I'm a black man. Well, you're more like off black, but I know what you mean. So expand that a little bit. Let the people know what you're talking about. Well, it's a fact that I am guilty of attempted robbery of Hartford Savings and Loan. And yes, I was present when the leader of our group, KK, decided to kidnap Kendall Sharif. So I guess I'm the bad guy. But I didn't shoot Kendall Sharif. Lieutenant Brown did. I saw it with my own eyes. Your Honor, I object. This is absurd. The witness is attempting to turn falsehood into fact based on speculation. Your Honor, the witness is merely giving his opinion. Objection overruled. You may continue. What I can't understand is how the coroner's office and everybody else is down with this cover-up. What, did you pay him off, Lieutenant Brown? Well, that's a good question right there. Attorney Andrews, how could my fingerprints be on that gun if I had on a white bodysuit and gloves? Reverend Woods, we like what you're doing. We want to tie our foundation into the positive work you're doing in Connecticut and the nation. We would like to support your youth program with a grant for $500,000. Then we can discuss supporting your march. We just can't have Mr. Ruff, a, a jailbird, to be a part of a program that we're funding. I'm sorry, but you'll have to find another coordinator. Well, he's the one that created this youth program. I can't lose him. Because of his work and his help, we'll be able to reach thousands upon thousands more kids. And on top of all that, he's the one that created this great business model for the march. You read it. We, we understand your position. It's very considerate. But we have an image to uphold. Here's the deal, Reverend Woods. Lose Diamond Ruff, and we'll not only give you the 500K, but we'll also give you another 500K to support your march in Washington. The choice is yours. You did what? You didn't take the money? That doesn't make any sense. It does to me. I wouldn't be this far in such a short period of time if it wasn't for your help. So I'm just supposed to get rid of you because someone offers me a check? That's not right. Money doesn't control me, Brother Diamond. God does. And God will make a way. You for real, huh? The God I serve is real. He's bigger than any check that can be written. Just wait till you see his blessings. I truly serve a mighty God. Wow, man. Nobody ever did nothing like that for me. Turned down a million dollars. Yo, Trek, man, I think you touched it ahead. 
Yeah, you're right. I am touched. I'm touched by God. But just hold fast. I believe he's opening some doors. Oh, yeah? Well, tell him to open up these doors first. <laughs> Have faith, Brother Diamond. Like I said, you haven't seen nothing yet. Has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. Guilty. Mr. Ruff, you have taken a life, and you must take responsibility for that. As punishment for your crime, the state of Connecticut sentences you to life in prison without parole. Court is adjourned. This was fun. Can we do it again tomorrow? Mom, this was fun. Diamond. What's the matter, Mom? Nothing, baby. Why are you so sad? Mommy lost her job today. My boss thought that he could do whatever he wanted with me, and I had to show him that I'm not that type of woman. Did he hurt you? Baby, remember this. All money ain't good money. I will. But one day, your boss and Harper Stamets and Lo will pay for this. And you can take that to the bank. Okay. I love you so much. You are going to shine so bright one day. But I don't want you to hold a grudge against that man or that bank or anyone for that matter. Anger is just the devil's license to destroy. I don't want anger to be your downfall. They need prayer, not revenge. treating you. Shit's horrible. But what if I told you you had an opportunity to get some, some real food pretty soon? What you talking about, man? We ain't getting out of here no time soon, at least no way official. And this whole drama team bullshit that they got going, traveling around, it's nice. But it ain't real. It's just a tease. Let me get to the point, man. I'm talking about escaping. Getting out of here, not coming back. Okay, keep going, man. We got that thing coming up, right? With the correctional facility, the, the kiddies, and the governor, and all them people, right? What if I told you I got some guys right now? We gonna take the bus. We gonna knock out the silly ass guards with the little night sticks, and we just gonna get up out of there. Okay. So what the hell I got to do with me? See, you smart, right? Everybody knows Diamond is smart. What I need you to do is I need you to take a look at my plan. I need you to take a look at it hard. Find the loopholes, if any. I need you to make sure my shit is tight, because I'm telling you, when all the screaming starts, there's nothing but opportunity for you to come with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me think about it, man. I'll meet you at the library. Go over the plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like the truth. All right, mm -hmm. man. Let me get at you. All right, man. So using some Egyptian hieroglyphics as a start, I created a code that no one else could decipher. Except one. Out, out, brief candle. 
Life is but a walking shadow that struts and frets his time upon the stage, never to be heard from again, signifying nothing. drama teacher. This is Dee Simon live on Windsor Street in Hartford where several hours ago a tragedy occurred. Now a bus carrying inmates who were performing at the Hartford Detention Center was hijacked. I'm hearing reports that two correction officers were gunned down and nine inmates have escaped and they are armed and dangerous. It was like a movie. We're on the bus talking, having a good time. Then the next thing I know the, the bus stops and, and the, the bus driver shoots one of the guards and my drama group just exits the bus. Uh, they're good guys. I think they were just afraid. I'm sure they'll turn themselves in eventually. Aren't you Diamond Ruff who shot Kendall Sharif? I didn't shoot Kendall Sharif. Lieutenant Brown shot and murdered Kendall Sharif. If I would have ran when that bus was hijacked, it would have shown an admission of guilt. I'm innocent, and I will remain in prison until Lieutenant Brown is brought to justice. I have faith. Live from Hartford, I'm D. Simon. What's up, y'all? Brother Diamond. God has put you in his good graces. Oh, I hope you're doing well, brother, because I brought you a guest. <laughs> Officer Yarborough, Hartford PD. You look familiar. I was the hostage negotiator the day Kendall Sharif was killed. Mm -hmm. I saw everything that happened. You know, my hands have been tied up until now, but I'm here today. I brought you something. So what's that? Let's just say it's a little gift from Prosecutor Andrews. I'll tell you what, why don't you pop that? Pop that right in there and uh, hit the on button there. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Woo! Picture's so clear, think you're watching the episode of Cops right now, don't you? Yeah, that's it. Diamond, mm -hmm. I'd like to extend a heartfelt apology directly to you. About time. Lieutenant Brown's actions on that day were deplorable. I came today to help exonerate an innocent man. Hold up. You had this the whole time I was locked up? Diamond, don't dwell on the negative. That's Focus right. on the positive, that's brother. That's right, keep it positive. In fact, you know what we need to do with this DVD now, right? We got to sell this to all the markets, all the televisions across the country. I'm saying all I need you to do right now, Peter, is sign that little document right there. Hold them up. Got a pen and everything. It's a new pen. You get to keep the pen. And what is this? It, it's so you can give me my share for the marketing. 60 40 sounds fair to me. Now, why would I pay you to market this video when I could put it online for free? Why didn't you do that, Pippin? Oh, man, that is messed up. Let's just say... 
Inspiration. To God be the glory. See, there you go with that thing. Okay, well, all right. You just inspired your way out of some money, man. We could have went shopping. And you, I don't know why you smiling. You're lucky you ain't in jail. In fact, you might need a lawyer the way you be acting. Why don't you check out this card? Because I'm doing some I special. I got a discount. The discount for you. All of February, 40% off. Lawyers. Yeah, I could probably hook you up on Can't live with them. I can't burn them with a stake. <laughs> but seriously, Brother Diamond, God has blessed you with this one. I can't wait to see what big work he has in store for you. I don't know if I want it. I mean, since I met you, I was doing my research, reading the Bible and all of that. And I noticed every time God blesses somebody, it takes a lot of work. The greater you give, the more abundantly you receive. And I also think that when God gives you a gift or a miracle such as this video, then you should show your appreciation by using your talents to help others. That's your gift back to God. Now, what I want to do right now is contact the clergy and the black leaders locally and nationally and give them this revelation. Now, let's pray. So letting the video go viral worked. While the world was angry with the lieutenant, I became a hero. So you want my views on Diamond Ruff getting off? All right, but you know I'm Maddie Love, and I'm always going to keep it real. Now, it's cool that Diamond Ruff got exonerated, but this, this whole thing, man, is bringing me back to my man, Trayvon Martin. Now, we know, we all know, that Diamond kidnapped that boy. And how he got off from that, I don't know. But he didn't shoot Kendall Sharif, so he should have been exonerated for that. But Zimmerman's exoneration in the Trayvon Martin trial? Yo, I'm not with that. I can't handle it. Matter of fact, see, you're bringing Maddie Love to a whole different level right now. I'm going to keep it real for you. Zimmerman followed an unarmed Trayvon Martin, shot and killed the boy when Trayvon was trying to defend himself. And they say that he wasn't armed. Yeah, he was armed. I'm going to go on the record and say, yeah, he was armed. But he was armed with a bag of Skittles. Come on, man. Skittles? Really? Was excessive sugar a, a crime in this country? How do I feel about Diamond being exonerated? I'm thrilled. My mother, Eleanor, her testimony exonerated Diamond and saved his life. So we need more people like her and Brother Trek Wood speaking on behalf of our brothers in the community. We can't have our black men being crushed by the justice system. Too many times our men are black until proven innocent. Just because a brother goes to jail don't mean he's guilty. So we need some people to stand up and speak up on their behalf. We can't have our black men being behind bars, uneducated, and jobless. Now, I'm not saying this stuff just because I'm prejudiced, because I'm not prejudiced. My husband is Mr. Al Safferstein. So, and I'll see you in a minute, boo. But anyway, we got to learn how to stand up on behalf of our black men, and that's my opinion on it. I am versed on that, the Diamond Rough story, and um, I'm aware that that man uh, tried to rob a bank with a Trojan horse. I, I think before we judge, we need to consider uh, people's pasts, and maybe there's a mental health issue involved with this man. Um, I think in the world, all over. There's more mental health issues than are being considered and taken care of. So I think that uh, that, that he needs to be evaluated on, on that, on, on mental health issue. Uh, but thank you very much. We're gonna head home. Diamond who? Um, I don't really know anything about Diamond Ruff. All I care about is Miami Heat and that they won the championship. Oh yeah, hold, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I heard about Diamond Ruff and the minister and the kid that got killed or whatever, but they found justice, he was exonerated. So I guess Hartford's not so bad after all. I'm gonna hit the studio though. Diamond Ruff got exonerated. All praise is due to a law. Bismillah right here. Man, Rahim. man, I know Diamond Ruff. Me and Diamond Ruff go way back. I know Diamond better than anybody in this city, right? People judging him and all that. But we need to really know why he's robbing a bank. Let's look into that, all right? Because there's something to do with his mom and all that, but I'm not getting into it because I'm not gonna put his business on blast, all right? But look into things before we judge. Peace, y'all. I'm out. The governor wrote me a personal letter telling me that his office would assist me with the fair settlement. Politicians. They're like lawyers. Anyway, it seems Trek talked to them and asked them, since I still had to serve time for the bank robbery, why not assist the Christian Center on a work release program to help reach a massive number of at-risk inner-city youth? Uh -huh. My brother. Damn. So Trek came off. through for me. Oh. This is a real Christmas present. Still got your man Maybe Santa finally came to drop off that long overdue gift. Hey, 
Let's get out let's of here. Mm. Welcome back. Let's get some food. All right, let's do it. I'm starving. Wow. Nice place, Trek. Ah, uh, thanks, brother. But I thought we were gonna go get some food. Well, we are about to feed your soul. But this ain't just my place. This is God's place, too. And hopefully you can find your heart to make it yours. The happiness to me is making a lot of money. Because money could change any situation. It could change lives. But Diamond, think about the people that you hurt. What about them? The people you take from. It's time to give back. It's your moral responsibility. God has truly blessed you, Diamond. And to show your appreciation, you have to give back. You know what? When I start helping you with the kids in this church, then I'll be giving back. And then me and the man upstairs will be even. We may have to do a little bit more praying for him there, Pastor. I feel you on that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray that you want to help these kids, not because you're obligated, but because you want to. You always kept it real with me, Trek. I'm with you. My brother. Good. Now, can we please eat? Amen to that. Yes, amen to that. Did I hear somebody say lilies? Yeah, you know about oh, that. Oh, I love lilies. <laughs> you tired of that, that prison food. <laughs> Stay this boy's life, boy. Saying I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Time to fight. Fight. My life is a testimony to the attraction principle. I realize that mind controls your world, your hopes, and your dreams. You must discipline your mind, because it is your greatest weapon. My mind is my temple and my God. No. 
fill my heart, Father. And Lord, it just won't kill. I have no one, no one, no one, no one that I can call on. All my loved ones are in bed. And I need somebody right now, Father, to soothe this trust. Down. 